I think we're the only disciplines that our only goal is about environmental and public health. Every other discipline can speak about it, talk about it, but they may be trying to design a product, they may be trying to do something else. But our mission is very simple, protect the environment, protect uh, the public health, and do it with engineering solutions that won't go the opposite direction. My role as an environmental engineering professor is really about trying to educate my audience, particularly in this case students, about what are the challenges that we're faced in the environment, the challenges of trying to protect the public health from not allowing what we do as a community that hampers the kinds of things that we uh, uh, put back into the environment. So really, uh, as an environmental engineering professor, my job is to make sure that I translate the technologies that we use to try again to protect the public health and environmental health. With the problems that we're facing with water shortages and things, that one water concept is going to come up where we won't distinguish what is drinking water and what is wastewater. It's just one water. And so uh, at some point, that's going to be the entire thing is just water and wastewater. And what I do is to make sure that we protect all healthy living conditions, living life forms. Mm -hmm. so. Well, the big thing that I think that uh, places like that can do is try to do resource recovery. So in other words, can we recover much of that fat, soil, and grease? Not only the yellow grease, which is coming directly from the kitchen and the oils, but this brown grease. And maybe companies can be developed. It's possible that young minds, engineers uh, there, could come up with a new creative process that actually makes it very cheap and effective to clean up brown grease and make it a biodiesel. I think that if that's possible, uh, that is a potential business opportunity that they could have if they're able to engineer something effectively. Um, I think another one is with the wastewater treatment plants. Again, if we can do some kind of co-digestion process, uh, that could be an easy, not easy, but a way to uh, uh, incorporate fat soils and grease removal from the collection system and into a resource recovery uh, as far as energy is concerned from that standpoint. And I think those two ways could be ways that Caribbean islands can do a, a better job or an improved job if they have also the same problems that we face here in the United States. I think a student should explore different techniques to solve problems. There are going to be experimental techniques and there are going to be modeling techniques. I think all of those who are trying to get into academia or be impactful should try to have a toolbox that contains both of those things. Are you going to be perfect experts in both at the same time? No. You may have a dominant place where you operate, but you should have exposure to both to be able to use some of those skill sets in trying to solve the problems that you're, you're trying to do. As far as for the future, as fuzzy as it is, there's a lot of talk about trying to see how nanotechnology is trying to uh, make its way as a way of understanding and develop new solutions and new treatment processes. So if I were going to encourage future research, if I was trying to be a grad student again, uh, my goal would probably be to look smaller and smaller and try to understand what's really happening at the nanoscale and then explore that and exploit that up to a larger scale into treatment systems because I think the future is going to be about really understanding what's happening at that scale. I'm a mechanical engineer. I started out a mechanical engineer. I did robotics, so I could be as far off as environmental engineering as possible. I went to work for General Electric uh, in Evendale, Ohio, in the aircraft engines business. And during that time, the company wanted to be more environmentally friendly. Coach, where they wanted more uh, to reduce the cost of compliance. But for me, there was a calling that said, you know, uh, I was a manufacturing engineer during uh, advanced technology. And I thought, you know, what we're trying to do environmentally, if you don't know anything about the manufacturing business, you could be harming the product instead of making the product. So original, my trip to environmental engineering was to try to make sure that what we manufacture was going to be environmentally beneficial. So whatever we use didn't harm the environment. So I went back to school to try to do that. But when I started investigating the universities that I wanted to go to, the professors that I enjoyed their research was related to water and wastewater then the rest is history. There's a whole host of mentors. And academically, it would have to be the, some of the older faculty that I've uh, run across uh, when I was a graduate student, you know, coming from different universities. Not going to name names because if I leave anybody out, I'm gonna, they're going to feel like, hey, I thought I was your mentor. 
but I can say that there are a number of them that are more of the older heads, older than me, so uh, they served as mentors to me. Not to mention, I, I can't uh, uh, not say that my parents were my mentors, they were my first mentors, so I give them hubs for getting me to the place that I am today. Um, and then um, it's whoever I can bounce ideas off, I can consider that they are mentoring me. So the truth of the matter is we should be mentoring each other any chance that we get. And there is no formal mentor-mentee. It's just relationship building. It's just the ability to give guidance because we care about one another. There's a lot of work to be done in terms of trying to improve the diversity in our field. Uh, it's a work in progress. Um, do I know what the answers are? Probably not. I know that anything that will improve inclusiveness uh, will definitely help in trying to allow people to feel that they are worthy of contributing and they are being highly regarded as contributors to solving the problem. So anywhere we can do that inclusive environment, you know, um, probably working in groups again, demonstrating to others within that group that you know, you have ideas, they're interesting ideas, they're maybe worthwhile ideas to try to solve those problems, are going to be platforms or maybe know, test beds that will allow some of that inclusiveness to happen. It's got to happen from freshman year all the way to uh, uh, senior, even into graduate studies. We must work as a team. The ability to share with others your experiences, your ideas, will allow that diversity to grow. You will not feel alienation. You will not feel being left out. That's the reason why, maybe, I, I wouldn't say, I, I should step back. It's not the reason why, but it may be a contributor to why that there are some that feel that they are being left out. We need to have inclusive environments. Do I know what that answer is? I'm not quite sure. We made that statement question of it, and there may be better people who have those examples. For me, the one that comes to mind is just trying to make teaming arrangements that happen from freshman year to senior year, in as many courses as possible, that allows people to demonstrate their skills, demonstrate their worthiness, as long as there are a coalition of the willing within that group to listen to those people and understand that they are having great ideas to solve those problems. A couple of things that I was hoping to do is try to do more engaging projects with K through 12 to get the graduate students and the undergraduate students to work in the high schools, in the elementary schools. It could be a part of the EWB process. Um, we're hoping that, and I'm still hoping that the Demographics Committee can galvanize some of these projects. However, those projects might be experimental, getting out in the field. It could be computer simulations to get those kids who are excited about playing games, like my son and other uh, individuals, to get some of those fun things at that level that are designed to help solve problems about the environment uh, and public health-related stuff. Could be some of those kinds of projects that hopefully the Demographic Committee can facilitate AESP to galvanize around at the respective schools. It's not going to be from the schools that are represented on the demographic committee. It's got to be an AESP initiative where universities in every state across the contiguous United States, including uh, offshore and stuff, uh, are doing these kinds of programs in their backyard. Many are doing that, I would say. Dr. Trotz is already doing that. We need more of that, more of that engagement, more of the coalition, the willing of people really trying to see how can we improve the diversity of the people we are trying to uh, engage and help us solve the problems of the environment. When you leave out a segment, you leave out all those wonderful ideas that that segment brings. And that's what we should try to minimize. The current environment that I'm in, I don't have a lot of opportunities to engage Haitians in, uh, uh, in North Carolina. Not to say that there aren't any, I can point to a few. And there may be more than I know. Um, but unfortunately, I haven't done as much as I'd like. And it is probably a sad point in my career that I haven't done so. Uh, I hope to rectify that, but the first thing that I'm trying to rectify is the diversity issue. And I'm trying to deal with that. Uh, it'd be nice if I hear an EWB is going down there. You know I'd be the first one lined up to 
help with that effort. Uh, and when it does happen, uh, hopefully I'll give an opportunity to contribute. But I couldn't be doing USF was great. They treated me like a king, and I appreciate all the, the uh, opportunity to meet the wonderful students. Uh, I'm envious of your students. We've got great students, too, at NC State. Hopefully some of you all will come to do PhD here. Uh, that would be nice. Uh, we've got a lot of great stuff, too. But I'm real happy to see a lot of uh, great students doing the work of trying to save the environment and provide their brain power uh, towards that effort. But it was great, and the weather is outstanding.